So by digitally coloring and starting with flat color all in one layer, this shows us how we set up this digital coloring sandwich, right? So these are all like little cutouts of cheese that with black on top all make sense together. Now, while it's still flat color, remember you can use your lasso and you can grab some of these shapes like the cigarette and the donut here. And maybe I just adjust them a little bit. My favorite thing about digital coloring versus, I, do, I used to do a lot of ink and watercolor as a traditional illustrator, right? And I love watercolor, it's great. But, and it looks great with ink. And you get lots of nice variations, but you aren't ever able to change the colors that you put down, right? You can only ever darken them in watercolor, you can't erase. But here I can use adjustments and I can use things like color balance or hue saturation. If I want to warm these colors up a little bit, I can do that. I can just add a little bit of yellow into them, into their midtones, a little bit of red, a little bit of green, a little bit of blue, you know. So you have all of that power before you move on to steps after flat color. So you can see that difference from that to that. And that just looks a little bit better to me. Okay, so now, once I'm happy with my flat color, I'm gonna change these colors into lights and darks. This is what's called duotone. So we did the flat color. The next step is to take that flat color and split it into lights and darks. And I always start with what's called hard edge duotone, which is what they do in animation. It's called cell shading because it's the, the next hardest thing to do, but then once you do hard edge duotone, it's very easy to get other variations. So this is how I do it. I make a duplicate. Notice that my flat color layer, my cheese layer, is the only thing that's unlocked. I duplicate it, Command J. Then I lock it, right? Then I rename it to duotone hard edge. And I'm going to change its color. Now it's going to be condiments that go onto the cheese. So I'll do it as red, like ketchup. Cheese and ketchup sandwich. Now it's just a duplicate right now. How do I turn it into something that's lighter or darker? I'm going to do the darker first. So I'm going to go to image adjustments, levels, and this is just true duotone. I'm going to shift them all darker about halfway in the midtones, maybe a little less because that's pretty severe. So you see I have a darker version on top of a lighter version. So how do I split it into lights and darks? I'm going to take my lasso and I'm going to find highlights. So let's just make it really easy. On the back of the cigarette here, I'm going to cut something out with my lasso with a zero pixel feather because this is hard edge. I'll zoom in on that cigarette so you can see, and then I'm just gonna delete it, and you can see I get a duotone. Right. Same thing here for a highlight on the donut on the top edge. I'm just gonna loop a cutout shape with my lasso and then delete. And then I get that cut edge. Maybe I want another one right here. another one right here. And this is pretty subtle duotone. So how can I make this look more pronounced? Well, I can make another duplicate of my flat local color. Command J. Call this duotone highlights. And this time, instead of letting them go darker, I'm going to go to image adjustment and I'm going to push them brighter. So I push that mid-tone slider to the left. Right? And you can see it get a lot brighter where I've cut it away. See that difference? Right? So now when I cut, cut away from the hard edge duotone, 
for the highlights, those highlights are going to be a lot stronger. And I can do kind of weird shapes for this funky looking donut. It's supposed to look kind of dirty and unappetizing. And it's hard to make a donut look unappetizing. Because donuts are delicious. I'll do it to the crumb. I'll do it to the fly's wings, the fly's body. Another little mini highlight in here. Put a little bit of texture into the cigarette. Cut out little shapes. Let that lighter color come through. And it's all safe because it's on top of your flat color. So that's my flat color. That's my duotone color. And then I can always play with the opacity of like that brighter highlight and tone it down. Or set it to dissolve, which I like, because that gives you a little bit of texture. That's because I zoomed in on the tools rather than the image. So it made all the tools bigger. So you can see that texture in there. That's from using dissolve. Yeah, like a, it's called the sand diffuse pattern. All right. Ooh, I like that. <laughs> so I like just those without the duotone, honestly. So maybe I take my shadows now. And I dissolve those, bring those down. Right? Another way is I can use dodge and burn. But that's better for soft edge duotone. So there's all kinds of things we can do. But I like the quality of that illustration. Right, so what I'm doing is I'm finding my duotones that I'm happy with. And just like I did to find my right flat colors, I can play with image adjustments. I can play with pushing that pink a little bit darker and maybe even pushing it a little bit warmer with hue saturation. And maybe a little bit more intense. about there. All right. So what is duotone? I'll show you on the, the swatches here. It is basically taking all your colors, whether they're textured with the dissolve layer style or not, and then darkening them or lightening them or both. So I take the bottom of these and I go to image adjustments and levels and I just push them darker. And I have to do it on the right layer. There we go. And that is duotone. If I turn off the dissolve, I have to dissolve on everything. I could just set it to normal, but I like it. That's what duotone is. That's duotone cut edge. How can I change it to duotone hard edge? Sorry, <laughs> duotone soft edge, because duotone cut edge and hard edge is the same thing. So what I'm gonna do, you know, I'll keep that as normal, is I'm gonna duplicate this duotone hard edge layer. Let me put them all into, all my duotones into a folder. 
and then duplicate that folder. So this is duotone, which just means lights and darks, not just two, but lights and darks. This is hard edge. Because white isn't a color. White and black aren't colors. So then, because there's no darkening white, because it's white, there's no content in it to darken. So that's why we use chromatic grays to color. And there is a slight difference here, because that's not pure white, that's a chromatic gray. So you will see there is a shift between that, but it's subtle. That white and black aren't colors. So if you know color, color acts as a wave to our eyes. The frequency of it is what gives us the, the color hue that our eye recognizes. White and black don't have a frequency. They only have an amplitude. So if it's in the, the pigment scale, then black is everything all at once. And white is nothing, like the blank paper. And on the light scale, black is the absence of everything, of all light. Then you get black. And so that's a flat line. Whereas white is every color showing in light. Like how bright sunlight is all the prismatic colors put together. And that's optics. It's a part of physics I actually enjoy. Black is all the colors in pigment. So there's the light scale and the pigment scale, and they, they're opposite of each other. But the absence of any light is black. Right? So it's called additive and subtractive. We'll talk about it when we're talking about CMYK color separation. Because CMYK inks are pigment-based, but RGB color on your computer screen, that's light-based. So whenever you see black on a computer screen, it means none of the pixels have any light in them wherever it's black the absence of light. And whenever you see white on your computer screen, it means the red, green, and blue lights are turned on at 100%. Which is the opposite if we were painting this, right? We'd have to paint the blacks, the darkest, on white paper. We'll get more practice at it as we're talking more and more about color. All right. So what did I want to show you next? Ah, uh, yes. I made a duplicate of the duotones. So they're all here. I'm going to try to merge it all together, this folder, this copy. Yes, shadows and highlights. You see how it's subtle because they're already so bright. But this was my flat color. Then this was my duotone. And the brights got a little bit brighter. Yeah, just a touch. Yep, and that's just the way I did it. So now I've copied that duotone folder and merged it all. And now I'm going to make duotone soft edge from the same choices that I did the hard edge. And I do that by using the only filter that we're going to use this semester in coursework. Because filters largely are a cheat. They're like using someone else's program at Adobe to make your work look a certain way, but you don't really get to control it. But this is a really basic filter. It's one I use all the time. And so we go to filter up at the top, and you go to blur, and you go to Gaussian blur. Now, Gaussian blur just takes focus away. And then you can already see what it's doing to my edge, but I can push the radius and blur that edge out until it's a softer and softer gradient. And then if I turn off the hard edge, you can see it's like really, really soft. So I need to make it a little bit less strong than that. So I go to filter, let me turn off the, the hard edge duotone underneath it. Go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur. It's the only filter you need to know. And I'll do it, looks like about 33 pixels. All right, so do you see that difference? And I can heighten it with image adjustments. 